the girls. Hi everyone. Did you know that what you share on Facebook is admissible as evidence? What you what you share on Facebook uh, can be used against you in a court of law. They give the example of a gang member, Melvin Colon, who had posted some threats on Facebook, and they say to some extent the ruling makes logical sense. When you say something publicly on Facebook, you're often sharing a thought with hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. There's not much that's private about that. And uh, well, they gave the example of a gang member, but. First Amendment violated as Facebook assists police in pre-crime investigations. So as I say here, on August 16th, former U.S. Marine Brandon Robb was arrested for posting his opinion about the U.S. government on his Facebook page. He apparently said something like that they were criminals and should be arrested. And as a result, they have put him into a mental hospital. So he's being incarcerated just because of what he said on Facebook. They were actually discussing here whether just liking a post could be incriminating. So okay, you can still like something, but be really careful what you say on there. Update. Judge orders release of detained Marine from psychiatric hospital. Brendan Robb has been released, and for sure this is a victory for the First Amendment, but still, it's really scary that this could even happen. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, attention these days to people making fake Facebook profiles are just using aliases or whatever. It's illegal. Is it illegal? I guess it is. It says here a felony can be committed by the user of the social media site by exceeding the authorized access, meaning any infraction of the website's terms of service. So when you agree to the terms of service, which is that you're going to use your real name and all that, um, like that's like a legally binding agreement and they could actually take you to court for what, a felony? But, you know, it's not really surprising because if you look into a little bit about how Facebook came to be, Facebook, the CIA, DARPA, and the tanking IPO. Apparently, Facebook stocks are not doing too well right now. But what's interesting about this article is how they say um, that why Facebook got to be so big. As they say here, Jim Breyer, head of Axel, attached a 13 million dollar rocket to Facebook and nothing has ever been the same. So Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, um, got a huge 13 million dollar uh, grant or investment and that's why it uh, it took off so well. And as they mentioned in this article, it, it's been connected to the CIA and DARPA and all this all along and what happened is that they saw this, they saw the potential in this for a, uh, you know, citizen monitoring program where, where people would just do the work themselves and make it easy for the government. And, um, and that's why they invested so much in it. The data mining possibilities were obvious to CIA personnel. Through their cutouts, as described above, they stepped in and lent a helping hand. So Facebook has been basically a CIA project from the beginning. And another thing that's concerning about Facebook is that they've recently introduced uh, facial recognition technology. So you're going to get tagged like automatically. And this is also used in a lot of cameras. Um, so but the good news is that Anonymous has released how-to instructions on fooling facial recognition. One of the tips they give is uh, if you want to foil this thing, tilt your head to the side more than 15 degrees. So that, because the, then the thing, uh, it doesn't have the capacity to read your facial features properly. So th this is one of its limitations. So just make sure you're like this in all your pictures. So your friends are probably going to start asking you, what's going on? Do you have a problem? Yeah, I have a problem. I have a problem with facial recognition software. Ah, Facebook, what can you do? Can't live with it. Can't live without it. Probably should figure out a way to live without it. You know what really kind of boggles my mind? I see all my friends posting really personal stuff on there, like all the time, you know, hour after hour, all these things that they're saying, all these, you know, things that they're plotting and would like to do to people. I'm serious, Carlos, you're a fucking pussy. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get a fucking cracker to stab you in the neck with an ace needle for only $10. And I always think like, man, what are you doing? One of these days that stuff's gonna come and bite you on the ass. Oh, but if you think that the solution is to not have a Facebook profile, think again. Because they figure now that if you don't have one, it's probably because you're a psychopath. Because that's what James Holmes and Anders Breivik had in common. Neither one of them had a Facebook profile, so, hmm? So that's it. Let me know what you think. Do you use Facebook? I do, in spite of myself. Anyhow, thanks for listening to me. 
and leave me your comments and I'll see you next time. Hey Carlos, come here. I got something for you. Check out this t-shirt from the Trudor Girls. This one is right here on my tetas. You can watch just like this, man. If you're not too much of a pussy, you go to the Trudor Girls at special.com. You're gonna wear a t-shirt like this, man. It's real badass. Come and get it. You're too pussy. That's what I thought. Carlos, you're too much of a freaking pussy. Hey, Carlos, too freaking pussy, man.